So here I am in the Amsterdam uh, Schiphol uh, Airport. Just finished the Digital Asia Summit in this beautiful city. And I'm having my well-deserved uh, high and so I'm ready to hit the road and fly home. And I just wanted to um, have some key reflections on what we have, what, did, what we discovered in the, in the past two days. It's been a very action-packed, very action-filled two days. Uh, first of all, uh, back five years ago, 2014, Professor Ram Charan wrote a very provocative article at the Harvard Business Review. And that was about uh, Professor Charan suggested splitting HR to two functions. On one hand, uh, the administrative HR should be reported to the CFO, and there, has, there, there should be an, an organizational leadership uh, HR reporting directly to the CEO. Therefore, HR value creation, HR can get closer to business and HR value creation can be realized. So that time that, that, that article created certainly a lot of interest in the internet and a lot of debate and a lot of disagreement and an argument about whether Professor Chan is right or wrong. And here we are five years later, uh, this is in a way a reality, not, the, not, not, in the, not the exact way how Professor Charan suggested, but in a way where technology is here, artificial intelligence is here, to take the administrative burden away from HR and free up time from HR to, to be in a position to be true value to business in through talent and organization and leadership uh, capabilities development. So we've seen several uh, amazing examples, amazing cases, what AI can do for HR today, um, starting with, for example, Ernst & Young, uh, putting a AI-driven chatbot in place over 250,000 employees and running and basically building the whole application within, uh, literally within a month, within 30 days, deploying it and, and achieving a tremendous cost saving of three and a half million dollars in addition to uh, in addition to free up so much time from administrative HR, so HR can be focusing on really on value creation. All the other, exa other, other example came from IBM, where uh, IBM, obviously a leading technology firm, uh, in the forefront of uh, analyzing unstructured data. So based on this uh, deep uh, unstructured data analytics, uh, giving suggestions on compensation, uh, and at the end of the day, suggestions there, but the decision has to be made by a, a, a person, a human being, that AI is there to support and give real-time information on what the right, uh, what, what the right uh, capabilities should be. So these are just uh, some of the some of the uh, key ideas on how organizations are using AI. However, what was interesting that uh, based on a global survey represented, there are only about 6% of the companies globally are actively using AI in HR. Uh, most of the organizations are currently in a sort of exploratory stage, uh, trying to find out what AI can or cannot do, and, and this is running, uh, running pilot projects and, and so on and so forth. So there's certainly huge interest and there's certainly huge um, uh, debate about what machines can do and whether machines will take away jobs, that certain jobs will disappear. Now the question about whether AI will take away the job of HR or not, uh, it was also an interesting debate because what we see now is that, and what was a suggestion that AI will not take away the job of HR. AI competent HR professionals will take away the job of the traditional HR uh, positions. So. In the future, going forward, what's absolutely critical and essential for HR to embrace technology, learn technology, learn business, get closer to the organization, identify what's the real source of value to stakeholders, to customers, and suggest ways of improvement. Uh, HR business partnering is moving to HR business shaping, HR business enabling, and that only can happen if HR is competent not only on the people side of the business, but also on technology and what uh, artificial intelligence can do to both business and HR.